guys and welcome back to our channel. I finally have a new educational ferret video out for you guys today and it is on how to care for baby ferrets. Again, what are you doing? Before we get started today, just a little reminder that my new book on the holistic care of ferrets will be out this spring. Not exactly sure when, but this spring as well as a new merch launch to go along with it. So that's really exciting. Keep an eye out for that. Let's just jump right into this video. Baby ferrets are also called kits. That is the more professional term for a baby ferret. I personally consider ferrets kits when they're under a year of age, because like for dogs, if they're under a year old, generally people call them puppies. I find that it works for ferrets as well to just be considered kits under the age of one. They certainly act like a kit up until like three, four years of age. Reputable breeders around the world generally will send them to their new homes, I should say, by the age of eight to 16 weeks, but between eight to 11 weeks is also really popular. But for American mill ferrets, they're typically shipped out and by the time they make it to the store, they're eight weeks of age. Although a lot of them look and act under eight weeks of age, I'm so small. Um, much smaller than a kit that you would get at a reputable breeder, but that could also be because it is not a good breeder. So let's say you just took home a kit between the age of 8 and 11 weeks old or 8 and 16 weeks old. This age is great for socialization. Now if you got your kit from a reputable breeder, they would have already started the bite training process, the litter training process, and socializing them with other people and animals and other ferrets. It's also a great age to introduce new foods. This helps prevent them from growing up to be picky eaters, which a lot of ferrets tend to be prone to becoming. This is the perfect age to introduce raw meats if they haven't already eaten them already. A lot of reputable breeders will be feeding their kits a raw diet, but if it is something that you're interested in feeding, transitioning them at this point is really, really smart. But it is a question that I get asked a lot. Is my ferret too young to eat raw meat? And my answer is generally no. Ferrets can begin eating meat right after they're weaned from their moms. Let them meet the people and animals in your home. Introduce them to new types of blankets and toys and do everything under supervision as well because they tend to be big chewers, they're very curious. Ferrets have like no sense of fear, <laughs> especially when they live indoors. They have a tendency to chew on like cords and little toys. Momo wanted to say hello. She came to us at eight months old, I think. Now this does not mean that you should flood your ferrets. So you shouldn't just throw all this stuff, new environments, new stressors at them, hoping that they will become numb to them essentially because it will have the opposite effect. It will be very overwhelming. It can create fear-based behaviors. Kits are very delicate. I mean, ferrets are just in general, but kits because of their size and nature at this stage of their lives, they're very fragile. So their environment and the care that you give them should reflect that. Avoid clumping and scented litters. Due to their very delicate and sensitive respiratory systems, they are prone to respiratory infections and ailments of relating to their airways. Your kit will definitely want to splash and spill any water that you leave for them, so it's a good idea to provide water in uh, clip-on crocs if you do use a cage or via heavy bowls that they can't spill and tip over on top of a no-slip mat. Ferrets, and especially baby ferrets, are very prone to GI upset, just going into a new home, eating new foods, making new friends. This is enough to trigger digestive distress in their bellies. So they may soil their areas more frequently. The pee pads might get really yucky, the litter, so you're gonna wanna stay on top of that. Continue practicing litter training as well as bite training. Reward them each time that they back into a corner with a pee pad or use the litter box. Reward them for polite play with other ferrets and yourself. Mark down any unusual behaviors that you might be seeing such as grinding their teeth while eating or drinking, restless sleep, weird sounds, uh, low energy, all of these are really good to know uh, when you do bring them to their vet visit. And just because your ferret is small and young does not mean that they do not need a good amount of exercise every single day. They should be still getting free roam. I have seen some people say that baby ferrets should be just kept in their cage um, up until they get older and then they can be given free roam time. 
this is definitely not the case i mean ferrets when they're babies they're smaller they're more delicate they're more fragile so more care is going to need to be taken but your baby ferret is definitely going to need sufficient free roam time or else they are just going to become hellions in the cage by destroying things chewing on things blockage hazard all that stuff that you want to avoid. Now we move on to diet. Diet is really important because you really should not be feeding a kit the exact same menu that you would be feeding an adult ferret or a geriatric ferret. The kit is still growing and developing both physically and mentally. So it's important that their diet uh, contains enough nutrients and in the right amounts, the right amount of fats, um, so that it will support that growth and development. Also be receiving a sufficient amount of calcium and vitamin D among many other nutrients. And again, kits can definitely go right on to eating a raw diet when you bring them home. And if you would like more information on feeding baby ferrets, feeding ferrets in general, raw diets, I highly recommend picking up a copy of my ebook, Feeding Ferrets Naturally on my merch store. This is gonna have almost everything that you need to know to form a good foundation of diet for your ferrets. But I will discuss a couple things specifically in this video here. So with raw feeding, you can either do a balance over time or a balance daily, meaning you can feed bits and bobs of animals throughout the week to make a weekly balance of the nutrients that they need. Um, daily balance, which is what we typically recommend for puppies and other young animals, is going to provide everything that they need, all that calcium, phosphorus, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, every single day. So every time they eat the food, they're getting all of that, so you don't have to worry about them getting less or more in certain areas of the diet. So I do recommend, if you have a very young kit, feeding them meals that already contains everything they need so you don't have to worry about anything. And this can be done fairly easily by using companies such as Rothing Miami, My Pet Carnivore, if you're in the States, there are a couple companies in Canada and in the UK as well that provide grinds, so pre-made ground raw food that contains bone, meat, organs for your ferrets. It's just something that you're gonna have to do a little bit of research on your own, checking the ingredients and so on and so forth. Free feeding tends to work well for ferrets just throughout their lives. There are of course gonna be some cases that it's not appropriate for ferrets who are very overweight who are having trouble regulating themselves, but in general ferrets are pretty good at regulating their body weights. Uh, so free feeding is really good for kits to ensure that they are eating enough. Some good supplements to feed baby ferrets throughout the week would be homemade bone broth. This is made very easily at home. I have a recipe down below. Fish, pastured eggs. Green tripe is also a great addition in the diet of ferrets because it does have a balanced calcium to phosphorus ratio. It also has partially digested enzymes which makes it really good for ferrets who are prone to digestive upset so it does help soothe their tummies a little bit. Probiotics are also great for gut health and is also something that I recommend in the diets of baby ferrets and just ferrets in general. Measure your kit weekly, measure how much food they're eating, their weight gain, their energy levels. If you prefer to feed a dry food, Zeewee Peak or Feline Naturals are my favorite brands. I do not recommend feeding any kibble to ferrets unfortunately due to its tendency to dehydrate ferrets. Ferrets who are eating kibble every meal for their lives tend to be chronically dehydrated and that leads to many issues down the line among the many other issues such as inclusion of low quality proteins, nutrients, lack of transparency with companies, contribution to diseases like insulinoma and uroliths of the ferret and a lot more. So for the medical side of things, I recommend everyone, no matter who, bring your kit to the vet upon bringing them home, especially if you're getting a kit from the pet store, which I hope that you are not, but if you do, you're gonna need to take that thing to the vet ASAP. You should provide a fresh stool sample for your vet to test for parasites. They may also want to check their ears and take a sample to see if there's any ear mite presence because they are very prone to ear mites. Do not, and I repeat, do not accept antibiotics as a just-in-case measure for parasites. If your veterinarian is trying to prescribe antibiotics and harsh antibiotics such as metronidazole to your baby ferret for even confirming the presence of parasites and there are no symptoms, do not accept this. You are more than allowed. It is within your right to say no. I have had many times where I brought a ferret to the vet no issues with parasites, no symptoms, no signs of parasites, but I wanted to get a fecal sample done just in case I like to do them every now and then. Many times that these veterinarians have tried to give in my ferret metronidazole or another antibiotic 
just in case, you know, if he does have it, that's great. I really don't understand this practice. Antibiotics are very, very harsh on your ferret's system, specifically their gut health. It kills all of their beneficial gut bacteria. And for humans, there are studies that show that it can take like six months for that good gut bacteria to replenish itself after a course of antibiotics. So if you can imagine for a little ferret, it likely takes a very, very long time for them to recover after that. And especially antibiotics for an unnecessary reason um, before tests even come back. Your veterinarian may also come up with a vaccination schedule. You do have a couple different options for this, so I do highly recommend that you do your own personal research before actually bringing your ferret to the vet and then discuss with your veterinarian. They may also discuss heartworm and flea and tick prevention as well, which is also something that you have many different options for. I like having a first aid kit ready for any new kit that I accept into my house, which is not very frequent, I will say, but when I do take in new ferrets, I usually pull out the first aid kit, make sure it's all good to go. So my first aid kit is going to include homeopathic remedies. Homeopathic remedies are very, very diluted formations that come from plant or mineral sources. And these are used to help encourage the body to heal itself naturally. So again, these are very, very diluted formulations. A lot of plants tend to be toxic for animals, but the homeopathic remedies are just so diluted, barely even a presence of the source in the final product product they are completely safe for animals to use. A couple examples of ones that I have on hand, they look like this. These are just little tablets. I have Nux Vomica. This remedy is specifically good for upset tummies, especially after eating a spoiled food, which you know one of my ferrets tends to do. Vomiting as well. It's actually considered a hangover remedy. And then we also have, this is Bryonia. And this one is a good kind of general cold and flu type remedy. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different remedies. And I do talk about almost every single one of them in my new book, which will be coming out soon. I have a massive list of homeopathic remedies on there and what they do in the body. Keep in mind that homeopathic remedies are not substitutions for medical help for serious issues, but they can help in the cases of minor problems at home, hence why you were able to buy them over the counter. Now we move on to kind of the more general tips. Kits are very small. They're very easily crushed, stepped on. You want to be careful of that. They also can fit into the tiniest holes. They can fit under doorways. They also have a tendency to chew cables and cord. Anything silicone, rubber, knit, foam are all materials that ferrets tend to like to chew, especially babies. They love to play, so make sure that you stock up on wand toys and chasers. Introducing them to cats and dogs in the home if you wish for them to coexist is really smart to do at this stage. Anything that you do should be supervised. Like in the case of Gen, for example, my ferrets are all considered adults, but when we got Gen as a puppy, the first thing that I did would start to integrate him with them. And he has really just been able to grow up with the ferrets and I completely trust him around them. He has never tried to harm them. He sees them as his siblings and he loves them a lot. Something that would happen if you had a baby ferret and they grew up alongside your cat or your dog. Of course, there are some cats, some dogs that really should not be allowed around ferrets. So that's gonna be totally just up to whatever your situation is. So that is all my tips and tricks on how to care for baby ferrets. I hope you learned a thing or two. Comment down below any tips that you might have specifically for baby ferrets. I would love to hear them. Thank you to all of our channel members for sticking around. Even though I haven't really been posting as much ferret content on here lately, just because I have so many videos on the subject already, I do not plan to stop anytime soon. I am kind of slowing down the ferret content in particular, just because it's a very niche subject. There isn't that much out there on it. I love talking about ferrets. I love educating on ferret care. I hope you subscribe if you like this video. I also vlog every single day and I post a video probably every week detailing my life, the animals, the ferrets, and I hope to see you there, but I hope you have a great rest of your day.